What's up everybody? Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. It's been a while. I say that every video, but we're here back again. It's about four in the morning right now. I was sitting there in bed thinking that I haven't done a video for you guys in a really long time. So today I want to cover what you should do or things to consider as a new and aspiring breeder. Let's dive right into it. I'm gonna be using boa constrictors in my video or boas, I'll say boa species in my video for the purpose of the talking today, but this can apply for anything that you want, whether this is ball pythons, Burmese pythons, anything like that. But again, I'm gonna be talking specifically about boas. So the boa I'm gonna show off, at least in this video, is a leopard boa. This is a full grown male. He is about uh, probably eight years old at this point. Leopard boas, because they're a smaller growing species, they are, you know, this is a full grown adult male. This is what you can expect. Reason why I picked him is because leopard boas are probably one of my favorite boa morphs. I think just the simplicity of them, but complexity of them is just what makes them amazing. It's a simple recessive morph. The morph itself has this awesome iridescence that the camera's probably not gonna capture. Uh, smaller growing species and they look awesome just being in their own base morph form. So I think that's pretty important. But what I really wanna talk about is when you're a newer breeder or, or an aspiring breeder, somebody that just wants to maybe get into breeding, I always recommend one, pick things that you love, but two, if you are not, you know, don't chase the money. I see a lot of people, they'll go after those super expensive morphs. We're gonna talk about why I don't recommend that at least as your as your base kind of foundation but uh and i and i'm not saying don't do that but i think you need to have that foundation first is uh you know this like a, like a leopard boa for instance this is a really good foundation boa what i would maybe call is like my bread and butter morph something that i know if i produced a hundred of these i'll sell a hundred of these that's what i i really am pushing for newer breeders is Instead of chasing all the latest and greatest in these crazy combos and spending thousands and thousands of dollars, which you can certainly do, uh, I would get the stuff, or at least have as piece of your collection, the stuff that is going to guaranteed sell. The stuff that is also in that cheaper price range. I said this in my videos in the past. When you are a new breeder, somebody that nobody's ever heard of, maybe you have a couple years on Instagram or social media pushing your stuff, but when you're a new breeder and you're pumping out $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 morphs, why am I going to buy from you if I can buy it from somebody who's been around in the business for 10, 15 years and they have the same thing? Now certainly, if you're producing something that's super unique, that may be the way to get into that high-end morph market. But if you are just somebody that's kind of dabbling in something that everybody else has and you're producing those $2,000, $3,000 boas, it's going to be really hard for you to sell that stuff. So, with that said, I'm not saying don't do that, but I do think it's essential to have stuff like albinos, just normal albinos, cal albinos, sharp albinos, sun glows, things like that, that again, I mean, albinos are a perfect example. I should be holding an albino, but I like leopards more. You can make an albino leopard, those will sell fantastic as well. But I always recommend going with your bread and butter morphs, your albinos, your leopards, your bloods, your motleys, your hypo motleys, just your simple hypos. I and mean, that's what better way to get a customer base than to produce simple, inexpensive morphs that are attainable to the common person. Somebody has a pet, you really, really, really need, and I can't emphasize this enough, to build that customer base. So one place where I see people go wrong, especially with when they start to use my approach by going and building your business from the bottom up, as opposed to jumping right into the top and hoping it works. And, and a lot of breeders will disagree with this. A lot of breeders push that way because that's how they're selling their $3,000, $4,000 morphs. They're selling the idea and the dream that you can sell it too, which is possible. But remember, I will sell a hundred leopard boas before I sell one $10,000 snake. So a leopard boa, still a, a really good price range. These guys sell, if they're, if they're Sonoran like mine or if they have some Sonoran in them, they're gonna be selling in the $600 to $1,000 range. If they are just kind of a, a mix of different localities and not necessarily Sonoran at this point, they're still in that, that $500 to $600, $700 range, assuming there's nothing else mixed in with them, like albino and anatheristic and things like that. 
So I guess where I'm getting at is you need to have that, that base. But what I see a lot of people doing is they'll produce a litter of babies and they'll wholesale the whole thing out. And in theory, that's good because you just had babies. You don't have to deal with it ever again. See you later. It's gone. Here's my whatever they sell it for. Probably 50 cents to 25, you know, or 50 percent to 25 percent of what it would normally sell for if they pieced it out. Um, but somebody's buying the whole litter from them. But they never got that experience, that customer interaction. And that's essential to really build your business and build your brand if you are serious about reptile keeping and breeding. In my opinion, again, others will disagree. I'm not the expert. I'm just talking from what I've been able to experience myself. And I see too many people going down the wholesale route and too many people going for the super high end morphs. I personally think, you know, why don't you take a shotgun approach? Get the high end morph, get the bread and butter morphs, get your base combos, those Motleys, those Hypos, the Aztecs, things like that. Guarantee you they're going to sell for you before you sell one of those super high end morphs. Then what you're going to do is that customer is going to go leave you a good review. And then you might get 10 customers on those Hypo bows that you sold for $200 a piece, $100 a piece, whatever it is. You're going to get those reviews. Customers are going to see that you're trustworthy, you're honest, and then the people are going to start to take their chance with you. That was probably one of my biggest lessons learned in breeding bow constrictors of bows in general is that I thought that it's fair game. If you just have it, you, somebody will buy it. It's like a car dealership. Ford is Ford. It doesn't matter who I buy it from. But at some point, it does. When you are trying to sell uh, a Rolls Royce at a Ford dealership, you're saying, why? Why don't I just go right to Rolls Royce? That's the best analogy I can give you. Why am I going to go buy a Rolls Royce from Kia? Nothing wrong with Kia, but what's happening here? Why is this here at Kia? Why is it not at Rolls Royce? Why is it not at another high-end dealership? Mercedes selling a Rolls Royce. I I'm not buying a Rolls Royce from Kia. Something's wrong there, even if it's a great deal. So that's the other piece I want to talk about. I see so many people saying, it's not a big deal. I'm just going to go $100, $200 under the asking price and everybody's going to flood to me. No, that's not how it works because those people who are looking for these boas are going to now ask themselves, why is this one cheaper than that one? I go to a Kia dealership and the Rolls Royce is half what Rolls Royce sells it for. I'm not even going to look at it. I might ask them about it, but you're going to get a lot of inquiries, but you're not going to get a lot of sales. And the sale you do get is probably not the customer that you want. It's the customer that's going to take it home. They got it at a deal. They're going to have some type of an issue with it, with their setup, because they took a chance. No established person, I should say very few established people, are going to take the chance on somebody they've never heard of with a super high-end morph, especially if it's discounted below what everybody else is selling it for. And the logic in, in theory makes sense. I'm going to... I'll use the word undercut, but I'm going to undercut my competition to get my name out there. That in a way makes sense, but in reality it doesn't work. I've tried it, believe me, it does not work. You cannot undercut. And I shouldn't say I've tried it, but I've seen it. You know, I've always tend to price my animals at market or a little bit above if it's a good example. You need to look at what's out there and say, is this a beautiful example of the morph and price it how it should be. The worst way to start off your reptile breeding business is by undercutting and devaluing yourself, devaluing the animals, and, and that's because you can't sell the stuff that you made. So kind of, I, I could ramble about this all day, but I think in a nutshell, that's kind of where I'm going with this stuff is pick something you love, that way you are always happy with the holdbacks, take your holdbacks from the litters that you like, and then sell off your stuff that that you maybe don't necessarily need or you can't keep because obviously we can't keep everything as you see behind me and as I've said in so many videos I want to keep it all but I can't I physically cannot do that I just had a litter of blood boas they're absolutely amazing they're hypo bloods I have like a plus written on them and stars because I want to keep some of them but I just can't I don't have room to keep growing my blood boas at least single gene bloods at this point now I need to start 
looking into other stuff. I need to start holding back my my blood or my IMGs that are het blood, you know, different things like that. But that's because I'm able to tap into that customer base at this point. It took me a long time to get here. I'm telling you, for the first five to ten years, selling selling an animal over five hundred to a thousand dollars was extremely difficult. It, it was almost uh, disheartening to the point where you say, "What am I doing this for?" Don't do that to yourself. Don't try to tap into that market. Boost your confidence in what you're doing in breeding, in selling, in marketing, with this stuff that people will buy. When you just target that high-end stuff, you are going to get discouraged because people are not gonna buy it. What you're gonna end up doing is trading. You're gonna trade this boa for that boa, which is cool. Nothing wrong with trading, but you're still gonna be left in square one where you don't have the customers. You have a whole bunch of people who now see you as somebody to trade with. And obviously, if that's your goal, then by all means, go for it. Trade for your stuff. If your goal is to make a sustainable hobby, a small business like what I have, which is both a sustainable small business, uh, then I recommend going this route. Get your base morphs, your bread and butter, your simple stuff that's in that $500 lower range. Then you can tap into the 500 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,000, over 2,000 is gonna be really difficult. I'm promising you that. If you're making animals over $2,000, you will sell one or two occasionally, but it's gonna be really hard to tap into unless you totally full speed ahead market in that direction. And even then, it's gonna be really hard for your first couple years. So as long as you're okay with that, as long as you can keep this stuff and you have the room to keep it, and you're not doing kind of uh, uneducated business moves, like trading all of your animals or like trying to lower the price and do things like that, that's gonna do nothing good for you, the hobby or the industry or the business that you're trying to create in the future. So don't devalue yourself, don't devalue your business, Pick with stuff, stick with stuff you love, stick with stuff you can sell and then expand from there. So with all that said, we'll wrap this up. I appreciate you guys checking out the video, watching, subscribe, hit that subscribe and hit that bell notification. That way you see these videos right away. Let me know, I may start doing things like uh, like giveaways and stuff like that. I've seen it on some other YouTube channels, not reptile related, but I really like the idea of it. Has me at least watching every video because I wanna see what's next and I want that chance to win the animal. So I might be starting to do that. So let me know what you think in the comments, if you like that idea, if you don't like that idea, and we'll go from there. So until next time, thank you guys for watching and see you next week.